Okay, Pete Oriello, thanks for the ride. It's 1108 on your North Jersey radio station, North Jersey 1500 WGAC. I'm Ardoni with another hour of music power. We'll also reminisce what happened in the past 24 years. North Jersey 1500. The Beatles. GHT. North Jersey. Art Rooney. Live on local North Jersey 1500 WGAC. Now, you didn't think that I was going to start the last show with a different group, did you? Of course, it's the Beatles, the greatest group of all time. Twelve minutes past 11 o'clock, and by the way, we're sending this out to uh, Linda this afternoon, my dear friend Linda, who is listening in uh, New York City this afternoon. She loves the Beatles just as much as I do. And I just want to say that uh, even though we only have an hour to spend together, my last show, I want to say that this uh, this show is dedicated to all of our listeners, our wonderful, wonderful WGHT listeners, the support or the contest we did, you were always there for us, and this show is for you, without a doubt. And man, are we going to miss you, all of us here at North Jersey 1500 WGHT. We're going to Chicago right now. I bet it's colder in Chicago than it is here. We've got 32 GHT degrees on the outside right now. Going to be talking about some of the crazy things that happened to WGHT Radio over the years and also some celebrities I had on the air, too. So stand by. It's going to be fun. Chicago on the radio on your favorite radio station and mine, North Jersey 1500 WGHT. 11.16 is our time now. We're at the freezing point here. 32 GHT degrees on the outside right now. And, you know, coming in and doing this show for 24 years in the afternoon is always a lot of fun. I surrounded myself with the best music that I could play, your music, as I always called it. But you know, there's oh, every once in a while you get uh, you get a certain spot, a certain uh, thing that happens on the radio that uh, just just brightens your whole day. And everybody said to me since we're ending this today, you know, what was the highlight? Or what was one of the big things on, on your show? And I can tell you right off the bat, without even thinking about it, one of the, the biggest highlights on, uh, on my show was having Dan Ingram as a guest on the show. Now we all listen to Big Dan Ingram on double Dan Ingram. There you go. We all listened to Big Dan Ingram on WABC growing up. He was number one in afternoon drive in New York for 21 years before the station went all talk in 1982. Now, there's a very funny story behind this, and I'm going to share it with you. Jimmy House and Greta, uh, they booked Dan Ingram uh, for the morning show. He was supposed to be interviewed on their morning show. This was back, I believe, in the spring or the fall of 2006. And I went into Jimmy's office, and when he told me that he had had Dan Ingram on the morning show as a guest, I absolutely insisted. I said, no, he's mine. He's my idol. He's on my show. Now, Jimmy and I, we went to back and forth on this for like maybe, oh, two or three days, something like that. But Jimmy was kind enough to see it my way. He said, okay, you want Dan Ingram on the show? Let me call him and talk to him. And Ingram agreed to do the show. So I had Dan Ingram uh, from Florida, I believe, uh, on, on the show. I can't tell you how nervous I was that day. This was the man. This was one of the reasons why I went into radio, Top 40 Radio, because of Big Dan Ingram and WABC. And he was so nice, he put me right at ease. You know, I gave a funny intro to him, and you could hear him laughing on the phone. You know, Big Dan, Kimo Sabi, like that. And we got into his history and this and that. And that particular afternoon, we made the New York message board because he revealed to me for the first time that when he was in between gigs, before he got the gig in New York at WABC, which was 1961, he drove a cab. He drove a cab for a living before he got his big break at WABC. He was at, uh, you know, he was between gigs and he was, he was driving a cab. And he told me, he said, I have never, ever told this before. I'm going to tell you, Art, on your show that I was a cab driver for one time uh, waiting for the big break to come. And we made the New York message board that night because Dan Ingram revealed to me something that uh, nobody ever knew before, that he was a cab driver when he wasn't a disc jockey. And at the end, when we had him on, he said something that I will never forget. I said, Dan, thanks so much. Thanks for your kindness and coming on the show. We had him on for maybe like uh, about to 30 minutes, something like that. It was a fantastic interview. And he, and he said something to me. He said, now, Art, he said, I want you to go back and entertain the hell out of your audience. And I never, ever forgot that. Dan Ingram on my show, my hero, live with me on the air in 2006 at North Jersey 1500 WGHT. It's a moment that I'll never forget. North Jersey it's not exactly fun and games when it comes to the weather. How about that snow we got this morning, huh? All right, let's see what's happening. It's all brought to you by Jigs McAllister's Music Saloon and Butler. Timmy does a great job over there. And I want to thank him and the staff for the, all those great $25 gift certificates to our winners on Friday. Timmy is a great guy, a funny guy, and I definitely wish him well. Morning snow is over. Cloudy otherwise. Less than an inch of snow and a high of 33. Tonight, mostly clear. Overnight low, 13. 13. Ah. Now, tomorrow's going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 30, and Saturday mostly sunny right now. Uh, no, no, at 35. Right now, 32, all across North Jersey. North Jersey 1500. Live 
local, North Jersey, 1500 WGHT. Do you remember when uh, Dan Ingram used to call uh, Roy Orbison the ugliest man in show business? And, you know, the older I get and the more that I play Roy Orbison on the air, the more I respect him. Well, what a great artist he was. He was also great friends with Elvis Presley, too. Pretty Woman, number one in August of 1964 on this, our last show at North Jersey, 1500 WGHT. And by the way, uh, speaking about Pretty Woman, my lovely wife Allison just walked in the studio, and she's sitting down here to my left. Say hello to the people, honey. Go ahead. She's waving. <laughs> this is not television. It's radio. It's been around for years now. She's actually waving and putting me in a very tough position, uh, come to think of it. 1136 at North Jersey, 1500 WGHT. Playing music and basically swapping stories is what we're doing here on the last show. I'm doing here at WGKC. John Silliman will come in at noon, and he will uh, he will definitely nail it down between noon and two this afternoon. How many people remember the morning guy on the weekend, Joe Rostell? Do you remember Joe Rostell? One of the nicest guys in this business. And Joe, I talked to him uh, last weekend, by the way, and he tells me this fantastic story of Tiny Tim. Now, I was here at WGHT when this happened. Now, apparently, Tiny Tim was making a personal appearance somewhere in Pompton Lakes, Wayne, I really don't know where. And it was Bob Bober, who was the sales manager at the station at the time, uh, had, had uh, gone to the uh, this affair with uh, Tiny Tim and talked to him into coming to the station and making promos for the new 1500 WGHD. So uh, they left a note for Joe Rostell saying that he'll be in sometime on Saturday morning. Yeah, he's going to be cutting some promos. So here's Joe Rostell saying, we got a big star coming to WGHD. Now, Joe tells me he expected a limousine and this and that, that, you know, that Tiny Tim would really be pampered and this and that. So Joe says he's looking out the front door because he was playing some music on the air and decided to see if he was going. And here he spots his beat up, uh, I guess it was a, like a 1958 Studebaker uh, station wagon with one tail light out in the back. And who gets out but Tiny Tim? Who says that show business is glamorous, huh? Came in, did a couple of promos, and that was it. But uh, uh, we had Tiny Tim on uh, the Uncle Floyd show many times, and uh, that was the whole thing with him. If you had him on as a guest, you had to always uh, go get him. He didn't drive. He didn't drive. So any time that he did our television show, we had somebody from uh, the station uh, <laughs> go and get him. But uh, that's a great story. Joe was expecting Tiny Tim to come in a limousine. And uh, he's actually uh, coming in a beat-up station wagon with a, with a tail light out. Ah, showbiz. Isn't it great? 11.38, we're doing all right at North Jersey 1500 WGHD. All your phone calls, all your emails, we thank you so much. And our loyal listeners, too. we got 21 minutes to go. And that's it at North Jersey 1500 WGHD. Stay with me. North Jersey 1500 GHT. Live and local North Jersey, 1500 WGAC on this, the last Art Rooney program. And honest, honest, I, I, it, it seems strange being on from 11 o'clock until 12. I don't get up this early. <laughs> 11.44 is our time. Now we've got to 32 GHT degrees on the outside right now at North Jersey, 1500 WGHT. I'm sitting here with you uh, playing the music and uh, reminiscing about the past 24 years, some of the people that I had on the afternoon show. Very, very funny story that I have to share with you about Cousin Bruce Morrow. E e e e e e e That's him, Cousin Bruce Morrow. Only he can do it, but he gets like uh, $4 million every time he does it on his show. So that's the difference between him and me. I had Bruce on. As you probably know, I was his midday guy and assistant program director at the old WRAN just up the hill on Route 10 in Randolph. He and I worked together for five years before he uh, sold that radio station. He was a great boss, and of course, when I got the job, I was thrilled because I listened to him every night at Music Radio 77 WABC. And he also, he always came on my shows if I moved to another station after that. Well, one time we had him here at WGHD, actually on the phone from New York, and I caught him at a kind of an odd time. He was getting ready to do something, and he wasn't dressed yet. So he's trying to do the interview with his cell phone and talking to me, and I could hear him. He's dropping his pants and dropping his belt, and I could hear the shoes. I said, Bruce, I said, will you please, you know, would you just, like I used to say on the Floyd show with the chicken, will you get dressed? And it was really funny because he was trying to organize himself and at the same time try to talk to me at North Jersey 1500 WGHT. And finally he got dressed and he sat down and we, and we had, uh, you know, a wonderful, wonderful interview. Actually, Cousin Bruce, he started at WINS in New York, as you probably know, and he was responsible for launching uh, the career.
career of uh, Paul Anka. That's a great story about Cousin Brucey. Paul Anka had a demo record, and he walked up to the studios at WINS, which was all music in those days. They were on uh, Central Avenue West, I think, uh, something like that. And he just simply walked in the studio, and Brucey put it on a turntable and uh, cued it up and played it. And Bruce liked it so much, I think he played it three times uh, during his 7 to 11 shift, and uh, and people said, who's that, who's that? And actually, Bruce Morrow is responsible for the career of Paul Anka, the beginning of it anyway. 11.46 is our time now at North Jersey 1500 uh, WGHT. A lot of funny stories, and first of all, I want to thank a lot of people uh, that call. Noam Layden called me on the show yesterday, now the news director at uh, Talk Radio 77 WABC. Noam did mornings here, along with other people, for about uh, three or four years, so it was good to talk to Noam. And uh, John Silliman told me just before I went on the air that Kevin Burkhart, God bless Kevin. Yeah, he's superstar now. You know that when he did the front row sports here at WGHD. I knew he was going to be big. I figured he'd wind up, you know, at ESPN or something like that. But here he is at Fox Sports. He's all over the place. And uh, Kevin uh, Burkhart actually called Jimmy Howes early this morning to uh, wish everybody well. That was a very, very nice thing for him to do. 11.46 is our time now. we got uh, 13 and a half minutes left before it's all over. So I want to play some music right about here. And it's going to be Madonna. I know sometimes she's a very controversial character, but when it comes to her style of music, it can't be beat. At North Jersey 1500 WGHT, for 24 years, your radio station and mine, 50s through the 90s. Live and local, North Jersey 1500 WGHT, Madonna right there. How many times on the air over the years did I say, Madonna, you know she wanna... 32 GEC degrees on the outside right now. We were talking about uh, Dan Ingram and Soupy Sales and Tiny Tim and some of the people that passed this way. I want to talk about WGHT Radio before we leave you this afternoon. we got about nine minutes left. This uh, was a unique radio station, thanks to John Sullivan. Probably one of the most... Uh, Oh, what can I say? Just so many talent has, has traveled through here throughout the years. And everybody gave 100% on the air, in my opinion. Uh, it, it was a unique radio station. We were a local radio station, yeah. But there was certain, a certain magic about this radio station. You know, we, we played uh, great music. We tried, to, we tried to always entertain you. I think that was it. Everybody here tried to entertain you and inform you. And uh, it's all live. It was all live. It was all local. So many radio stations uh, today, you know, they push a button or the disc jockey does uh, voice tracks and this and that. We never did that. John Silliman never did that. We were live. We were local. Mistakes were there. Sometimes we played the wrong side of a record. There you were. It was real. And uh, going to miss that. It is unique in radio these days. And to lose WGHT radio is definitely sad because uh, I don't think that there are too many radio stations like this one across the nation. So to leave this radio station today is very, very sad for me. I have had a ball. I have been here for 24 years. I played the music that I wanted to play. I had the guests on the show that I wanted to have. And uh, you can pin it all on John Solomon's door. He was the one that, like I told you when I had him on my show yesterday, you know, uh, I know I annoyed him at least once or twice. <laughs> I'm probably annoying him now because I'm talking too much. But uh, it all belongs to John Solomon. And we thank John. He's responsible, of course, uh, for the programming here at the radio station. But I think everybody, everybody on the staff just did, did a tremendous job because we all believed in what a local radio station can do to try to satisfy the listeners. So it is a shame that we are leaving you, but we, we, we leave with a smile because I think, uh, you know, we accomplished what we set out to do. Play the music that you wanted to hear, took your request, did the contest, and most of all, most of all, kept it local and tried to have a good time with it. At least I did anyway. Let's uh, do a couple of commercials here, and then I guess we'll kind of nail it down. North Jersey 1500 WGAC. I just had a request for uh, somebody wanted me to do the Mr. Oh Yeah from the old Uncle Floyd show. I don't know if I can do it. I can try I can try and do it. Oh, yeah! Hey, I did it. Okay, special request right there. <laughs> WGHT, your North Jersey radio station, three minutes before 12 noon, so it's come down to this. The only thing I can say is that listeners make a radio station. Without you, I wouldn't have been here for the past 24 years. Thank you so much. I had a good time today. You know it's got to be fun for me, so it's going to be fun for you, too. This is North Jersey's live and local radio station, North Jersey 1500 WGHT. Pop to New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey.